Hi, my name is Sherry DeBoitz and I'm the coordinator for the Coquitlam River Watershed Roundtable. We are a collaborative organization of 12 different sectors that work together to support the health of the Coquitlam River watershed. Today, I'm going to show you some of my favorite spots that you too can visit and get involved in. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Coquitlam First Nation. So what better way to start the tour than by getting a bit of a history of the area from them. My name is Nancy Joe. I am from Quiquitlam First Nation. Our people have resided here for thousands of years. The lands are now occupied by the city of Coquitlam, the city of Port Coquitlam, the city of Port Moody, New Westminster and Burnaby. Our land is rich in resources that our nation has fought hard to protect over all the years that we have resided here. We have lost so much and we are fortunate to work with many people in the watershed who have helped us along the way. Our nation continues to work towards stewardship of our lands. We are currently involved with the Coquitlam Salmon Restoration Project, the KSRP, to restore a sockeye run that had traditionally came to the Coquitlam River. Coquitlam is also working closely with the Coquitlam River Watershed Roundtable. We were there at the beginning when it was first created. Coquitlam's goal is to provide a guiding voice going forward with the protection of the environment and the lands and waters that we hold dear in our hearts. Some of our key priorities are archaeological resource protection as well as environmental protection. We have been working with outside groups and other entities to start an Indigenous monitoring program which would include the protection of environment and archaeology together. Our main goal is to provide a lasting legacy for future generations of not only our children but all the children in our watershed Coquitlam encourages everyone to participate or volunteer in any capacity that you can. You can reach out to Coquitlam First Nation at www.coquitlam.com or you can contact Cody Kenny at the band office, phone number 604-540-0680. I'm Sandy from the Maple Creek Stream Keepers. We work on an urbanized stream. We do rehabilitation and rehabilitation of all of our uh, cobble and all of our native plants. And we're actually seeing a return of native uh, species of salmon that we haven't seen for years. They can actually feel the temperature changes, the pollution in our area, quicker than anything else that we have. Um, people don't realize that our salmon actually feed our invertebrates, feed our trees, feed our birds, and once they're gone, who's next on the list to actually disappear out of our uh, whole environment. We want to make sure that everything thrives in our water courses, including the knowledge that we can pass on to the youth and you can take with you to university. There's nothing more interesting or fulfilling than seeing fish spawn, fish grow. When people build, they move our streams so it's beneficial for people that want to build your homes but not so beneficial for our fish. This has been really well cleaned up by an army of volunteers. If you want to reach out to us, maplecreekstreamkeepers.com, reach out to us. Hi, I'm Robin Wischel and I'm the president of the Hoy Scott Watershed Society. I'm standing here on the property where the Hoy Creek Hatchery is and behind me is our rearing pond. We are stewards of two creeks here in Coquitlam, the Hoy Creek and the Scott Creek. 
We are a group of about anywhere between 25 to 40 volunteers who lead a salmon enhancement program here which has involved hands-on work with salmon, coho and chum specifically, as well as we do a lot of work in the riparian area of the watershed, making sure it's a healthy, sustainable habitat for the salmon. This is a, a beautiful piece of history here because this used to be the property of a gentleman named Fred Brewer who started a trout farm. In 1995, the Coquitlam Optimist helped support the restructuring of this uh, facility, this rearing pond from trout to, to coho salmon raising. And uh, since then, a hatchery was built here on the property to support a uh, preservation uh, of the salmon here in Coquitlam. And we now have a society that, which started in 2002. Hi, my name is Tyler Storgard. I'm the Vice President of Hoy Scott Watershed Society and the Assistant Hatchery Manager. Uh, we partake in the Salmon Enhancement Program uh, in partnership with DFO among others. We're here today at the Hoy Scott Watershed Hatcheries uh, where we participate in the Broodstock Collection Program uh, for both coho and chum salmon. Uh, these fish are a little over six months old now uh, and they'll be held in the rearing pond up until our uh, Salmon Leaf Home Event uh, next May of 2021. Uh, the fish themselves, uh, coho, are held for approximately uh, from retention in uh, December through till the point of uh, release as smolts, at which point we'll incubate both chum and coho salmon separately uh, in two different areas within the hatchery's uh, premises. Um, the hatchery was built in 1995 through to 1997 uh, and currently goes through programs annually with student um, and community-led volunteer programs. things we struggle with is we're in a very urban setting we're surrounded by condominiums and high-rises soon to come and we're always concerned with um, the foot traffic that comes along this beautiful uh, watershed so I was looking for the support of our neighbors to keep out uh, keep a watchful eye but also to get involved with us we're always looking for volunteers if you want to uh, get involved hands-on or support us in any way you can reach us through our website at hoyscottcreeks.org you can also reach out to us on Facebook and we have a YouTube channel. Hello, my name is John Jaxi. I've lived here in the community of River Springs for 37 years now. Uh, got involved here with Oxbow Lake Probably about 35 years ago, I was a member of the uh, Strata Council at the time, and the people that lived here on this lake um, were upset that the lake was um, very stagnant, actually had a smell to it at times. The only water uh, feeding into it was from storm drains in the roads. It originally had been a side channel of the Coquitlam River, but had been cut off by dikes over the years, and so had no real water supply. So we took it upon ourselves, put some money together for three years. We saved $5,000 a year and got $15,000 together and went to the Department of Fisheries and Oceans and said we want to improve this lake and we're putting our $15,000 toward it. Um, that was done and Oxbow Lake uh, became uh, attractive again full and the side channel was about two kilometers of perfect uh, coho habitat. Then the next step was, or my interest, was to start putting some salmon into the lake. So I set about um, hatching my own fish. That was probably about 30 years ago, and to this day I'm still hatching fish here in River Springs. I'm doing chum for the salmon in the uh, classroom project for School District 43. And I do probably between 10 and 30,000 coho a year, um, depending on the return. And those are released right here into um, Oxbow Lake, where they live for a year before going to the ocean. Um, there's uh, few things going on in this area like a huge increase of population of people using it for the day all at this park but there's been no improvements for probably 25 years when it comes to garbage um, cans uh, washrooms other problems are invasive plants at this time um, there's been no real group um, doing that in this area at all and it's quite bad mostly because of all the residential development in concluding, I would like to say a big thank you to the community of River Springs that for over 25 years has provided me with a facility to raise uh, coho and chum salmon and picked up my electrical bills at the same time. I could be reached at John, J-O-H-N, my last name's Jaxie, J-A-K-S-E, 
at yahoo.ca. My name is Jennifer Buchanan. I'm a project biologist with InStream Fisheries Research. InStream Fisheries Research is an independent consulting firm based out of Vancouver. For the last three years, we have been the primary contractor for the Coquitlam Mon 7 field program on the Coquitlam River. Coquitlam Mon 7 was initiated in 2000 under the BC Hydro Water Use Plan to monitor fish productivity in the lower Coquitlam River. Each spring, five rotary screw traps, or RSTs, and four side channel traps are placed in the Coquitlam River to monitor outmigrating salmon and steelhead trout. Each trap safely captures live fish moving through the river and stores them in a trap box. Crews check each trap box one to two times a day and count each species present. We generate population estimates for each species by marking a portion of the fish captured each day and releasing them back upstream. This allows us to estimate trap efficiency or what proportion of the migrating fish we are catching. In recent years, a decline has been observed for all juvenile salmon species. However, this trend has been observed across several lower mainland rivers and is not unique to the Coquitlam River. If you are interested in seeing us in action, three of the RSTs are at the Crystal Falls Trailhead from February to June of each year, and the crews are happy to talk about the work we are doing. We also post our daily catch on a bulletin board at the same site. My name is Matt Cavanaugh. I'm Environment Manager for British Columbia uh, for Lehigh Hansen Materials Limited, and this is the Pipeline Sand and Gravel Mine. Lehigh Hansen produces sand and gravel from this mine, um, hard rock from other quarry locations, asphalt at our asphalt plants, and ready mix concrete and ready mix concrete products like pipe. To prevent erosion in rivers, we contribute coarse material as armoring around cut banks and other areas that have faced erosion historically and uh, we also provide sand and gravel for fishery spawning areas, turtle beaches, and lots of other locations within the watershed. On site, uh, especially at Pipeline Mine, we face uh, water as a massive challenge here, which is directly potentially impacting the Coquitlam River watershed. So any rainfall that occurs and, and lands within a disturbed area is directed towards the major water pit that we have uh, at the pit floor. Um, this water infiltrates, goes through the groundwater and returns to the Coquitlam River. We don't use any chemicals in any process other than flocculant to settle out fines in, uh, in any of our water treatment here. It's all done by slowing the flow down and allowing fines to settle out in infrastructure such as this horseshoe pond behind us. We sample our water every single day the City of Coquitlam bylaw comes out and checks on us to make sure we're doing a good job. Typically when a mining area is, is completely extracted, you'll end up wanting to grow plants and trees and, uh, and drawing animals back to the area. And this year we are planning on reclaiming the top section that you can see up there. So if you come by within the next few months, it should start getting more and more green. A couple of the projects that we've worked in the community on are uh, the Earth Rangers Bring Back the Wild project. Um, the Earth Rangers are a group that go to elementary schools. Um, they've been to the Coquitlam River School just down the river here, um, and they promote biodiversity to elementary school children. In this case, we worked with Coquitlam First Nation on sockeye salmon and ensuring that the spawning in this area was doing well. If you search Earth Rangers sockeye salmon, it should guide you to the right place. Other projects that we've worked on with the surrounding community is the Lost Lake Mundy Park Painted Turtle Rehabilitation Project. In conjunction with Jack Seawee Construction, we took some equipment down there, a few truckloads of sand, and rebuilt the turtle nesting beach. This should give the painted turtles uh, a fighting chance to establish a uh, good population in that lake once again. If you have any questions or comments about our reclamation programs, our community engagement, or anything to do with our mine here, you can find Lehigh Hansen contact information on the Coquitlam River Watershed Roundtable website. 
Any inquiries that get sent out through there will end up with me and I will be happy to get back to you. Welcome to the Grist Gosen Memorial Hatchery in the upper Coquitlam River. My name is Brian Simonson and I am a core coordinator along with Norm Fletcher for the hatchery. Um, what we do here and our purpose is to really develop and conserve the river system and the ecosystem within the river. We raise approximately 70,000 coho here annually plus 30,000 chinook. Well, let me introduce you to how the Grist Memorial Hatchery began. Um, it's a subsidiary of the, the Port Coquitlam Hunting and Fishing Club, which is a fully registered nonprofit organization. In around 1978, um, uh, Al Grist and Wayne Gosen had the dream of, of starting to replenish the river. They started with two small river trays, wooden troughs, okay, but it has grown today to be a 24-7 operation. Well, I mean, we work with many groups. Um, primary groups is the Poco Fishing Hunting Club, which supports about 80% of the funding, DFO, which supports 20% of the funding, and the Pacific Salmon Foundation, we can apply for grants for special projects. We operate with 32 volunteers. We release two types of fish, a clipped fish, and an unclipped fish. Unclipped fish are considered wild. Clipped fish are considered catchable and support the recreational fishery. One of the things that we are doing, and it, this, this fall will be the first time, is putting broodstock into Cedar Creek, which is above the dam, as the beginning of the process to, 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 um, to support replenishment of the fish stocks above the dam and the ecosystem. The second component of that is we're likely very close um, with the Coquitlam First Nations and all the stakeholders to actually developing and redeveloping the redfish. And hopefully within the next couple of years, um, that will start to happen to fruition where the hatchery for Saka hatchery below the dam. How can the public get involved? If you wanted to, have to see what's, what's happening up here, or if you wanted to have a small group tour, or just and, and on educational purposes, um, number one, you can refer to the Poco Fishing and Hunting webpage, but beyond that, if you contact the Poco Fishing and Hunting Club, um, they will refer you to either Norm or myself, and we would gladly talk to you to see what's possible if you had an, an education tour that you wanted to have, etc. We would gladly do that. To, to the general public and to the industry, I hope that Every day that you're enjoying the river and the ecosystem, just be aware of what you put into the river. Whether it's a cigarette butt, whether it's a wrapper off something, please put it in your pocket and take it with you. Just be aware and be kind to the river. That's all I ask. My name is Scott Stewart. I'm the Supervisor of Environmental Management for Metro Vancouver's Watershed and Environmental Management Division. I uh, am part of a team that oversees the uh, source water areas for uh, collection of water for the Lower Mainland. Right now we're standing on the Coquitlam Dam. The Coquitlam Reservoir is right behind me and the watershed uh, beyond that is roughly 20,000 hectares in size. The goal is to supply clean, safe water, uh, efficient water, um, and protect the watersheds as the natural assets. We monitor watershed health on, a, on an ongoing basis. We, we're interested in uh, um, pathogens, uh, insects, and disease. We, we uh, monitor water quality and um, are, are looking for things like invasive species and trying to keep those out of the watershed. Um, one of the best ways to preserve the uh, integrity of the land base is to keep people out. So we have a, um, a, a no access or restricted access policy that's been in place for many years uh, at Metro Vancouver, which essentially means the only time you have or the only ability you have to get into the watershed is if you're a worker. 
uh, and or uh, as a member of the public you would be participating in a watershed tour. The school programs run annually and uh, I think it's upwards of 5,000 kids a year that uh, tour into the Lower Seymour Conservation Reserve as well as Coquitlam Watershed here and the focus of the tour would be on sort of the natural environment with a particular focus on, on water resources and, and, and use in the Lower Mainland. That's all we have for our tour today, but there are so many more amazing places in our watershed that we encourage you to explore. To learn more about the Coquitlam River Watershed Roundtable, to donate, or to get involved, you can contact me at coordinator at coquitlamriverwatershed.ca or visit our website at www.coquitlamriverwatershed.ca.